Uh, speaking about people who are really funny and talented, unlike uh, others, yeah. I believe that it is very, very important to speak about our lives. And Jugush is one of those people who has let us in through all of it. Even today, I saw his post talking about uh, promoting his show, TNT, and at the same time, joking about Vibes Cartel's bleached face with mm. the tattoos, and I was on the ground. I didn't understand half of the things that he said, but like it was still really, really funny. And he's such a timely comedian he always is on top of everything like anything new even if i don't know what is trending and i go and look at njugusha's page i will know what is trending based on the kind of post he has posted mm -hmm. now he has just come up and spoken about a little bit of his life on a session uh where it is called whispers of my childhood and specifically through thick and thin it's his book uh yeah his book sorry yes his mm -hmm. memoir uh, called Whispers of My Childhood Through Thick and Thin. And I see a few things that he's spoken about that are actually very interesting. For example, um, apparently when he was born, when he was a lot younger, he had a condition called a condition where his tongue uh was like attached to the to the to the to the bottom of his mouth so he couldn't like lift his tongue mm -hmm. um it was called uh, i'm trying to find it uh, it's called ankylo ankyloglossia which is a condition wherein the tip of the tongue is tied to the floor of the mouth you uh because of the frenulum frenulum is like the car the ca piece of meat that usually is caught between your tongue and the, you know, your jaw. It's very common. Yes, a lot of children do get born with that. And it, it is a very easy condition to treat, but that was a long time ago. Usually nowadays, it's just snipped and then you keep it moving. But thankfully for him, his mom took him to hospital at Mary County Hospital, and he was able to get that uh, sorted out. And he continues to actually tell us very interesting stories about his life as well, including the fact that apparently he and his brother used to be bedwetters mm -hmm. when they were kids. So the mom would create a system of reward and punishment wherein, if you don't pee in the bed, I will give you a sweet in the morning. So it became sort of like a competition between him and the brother, such that if you don't pee, you know in the morning you have candy. Mm -hmm. And that was an incentive and they completely stopped uh, wetting the bed. But the one story that was a little, um, a little too serious was when he spoke about his uh, near-death experience. And when I say near-death experience, I mean his own unaliving. Mm -hmm. He says that his parents had moved to Joska in Machakos County. What's up? What were Kamulu Joska? Anyway, they'd moved to Joska and had left him with his auntie because he was still in school in Gishagi. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem is he felt lonely. He was going through his adolescence and ultimately, for some reason, he doesn't quite understand what it is. He says it could be a combination of uh, nostalgia and uh, what's the other word? Melancholy, which is now known as depression that may have led him to consider ending his life. But thankfully, he didn't. Um, and he's now fine. And he's still reveling about the fact that he almost did that. And he can't actually believe that that almost happened. Mm -hmm. Like such a cute combination of stories of his childhood. You know, oftentimes, whenever I hear people uh, speaking about their lives and they speak about such in-depth things, I can only imagine that they've taken so much strength within themselves to reveal their lives in this way. It's not easy for someone to speak about such dark times in their lives, mm -hmm. especially when he was such a young kid. 2005 is quite a long time ago. Mm. So you can imagine he was probably going through a lot. And that was something he had to deal with after. And now he's okay. He's a grown man, very funny. And many comedians actually have very dark stories. So anytime you think about the fact that someone is this successful, but they've gone through all of these things, it gives you some somberness mentally. You're like, you know what? If they went through all this and I'm going through all this, maybe there's light at the end of the tunnel and that is the message that i took away from this so mm. thank you jugush for sharing bits and uh, bits and pieces of your life it's quite nice to actually get to know him on a personal level mm -hmm. it's not very often that we get to see this this version of him that is just authentic um and and very revealing of his life story so it was really cool to get to know jugush mm. i i feel like also like when you look at his story it just reflects on artists like people who are very artistic tortured and artists mm. this is they use their brains and their minds and how the, they think the world works 
to kind of, you know, bring their art out. And nine times out of ten, they're usually dealing with a lot of things because when all your work is up here, you have a lot of demons you're facing. You can't even compare to somebody who just does manual labor and can see the fruit of their work. You know, having an idea and then actualizing it and bringing it to life, it's a difficult thing to do. And sometimes you have an idea, you actualize it, and then it doesn't come out mm -hmm. the way you were thinking. And now you're like, hey, what is happening? Or something was funny in your head. You tell it to somebody else and they're like, hey, that's, that's okay. disgusting. And you're like, hey, this is my lifeline. This is... This is all me. How dare you just come and rain on my parade like that? Even Afundi, if you tell me, eh, hey, your chayako, it's crap. You, you, you can do better. All they'll do is get a saw, you know, do something and fix it. They're like, is this how you wanted it? Okay. But once words have left your mouth, Nivo, there's no correction, there's nothing. You just face the repercussions instantly. So, you know, the dark side of comedy is just usually that. It's the insecurities that come with it. It's the depression. It's the loneliness also because you do lose a lot of friends, especially when you're very loud about what you're saying. Hey, your friends might take it personally. Your family might actually take it personally. I also saw the story. He went on a vernacular uh, channel, a radio station, and he was giving the story about, you know, his first experience uh, being on TV. And he felt very accomplished because, what, what do you mean I'm now on TV? And he even had that confidence when he went back to Shago. And only for one of the people he, he used to look up to in his village uh, was still, oh, you know, by the way, Njugush is on so-and-so channel. And the person, that person say, ah, we don't watch that channel. Why should we change the channel we're watching? Because of, you know, regular Njugush. What, what's that have to do with anything? And he really felt hurt because I am the boy of your village who has finally made it on TV. Not everyone from here goes on TV and you're just going to like piss on my accomplishment it like, it's nothing. like that. Mm. Especially given that I used to look up to you. I wanted to impress you. And I'm just like, ah, okay. But we're not st st going to stop watching uh, Coco Melon because Njukush is on another channel. That makes no sense. So <laughs> I do understand. But other than that, Jugush is doing a good job. He just sold out his concert over 6,000 people. He had th that place packed. It was a, su a success. And congratulations to you and Jugush. Y'all are doing a thing.